Welcome to Studio Talk. I get asked this question a lot, and that is, should I buy a digital mixer as my recording interface, or should I buy a traditional audio interface as my recording interface? Well, today we're going to talk about the reasons and the pros and cons of both so you can ultimately decide. Now, understand, I'm going to give you my personal opinion. This is one of those questions that, depending on where you are, there really is no wrong or right because there's so many different variables that can take you in different directions to justify one over the other. And so all I can do is give you some things to consider when you're thinking about it and ultimately tell you what I would do if I were in your shoes and why. Let's start this conversation with digital mixers. Digital mixers can be quite compelling when you look at overall feature base that's all packed into one considering the price. You can get digital mixers anywhere from $800 really up to $2,500. And that's the range that I'm talking about right now for the sake of discussion for you to be able to consider what your options are. Beyond that, it's really a totally different discussion at that point. Um, but let's talk about them. Digital mixers originally came out not with the idea or the concept that they would be used as recording interfaces. That kind of evolved a little bit later on. They really uh, came in for live use and really replaced, like, for example, when I was a young guy playing in bands and things like that, you know, if you needed compressors on your drums and things like that, you'd have to have an individual hard 19-inch rack hardware compressor for each one of those. If you wanted multiple different types of effects, be it delay or reverb, you'd have to have a reverb unit. You'd have to have a delay unit, you know, and your EQ was always built into your board. Um, and so... That was expensive. I mean, super expensive to do all that and get any kind of quality. Well, today, digital mixers have replaced all of that. You don't really need any of that anymore, saving you a lot of money. Today, if you look at it from someone from a previous generation or generations, um, you know, you would see that, um, you know, they're very, very, very compelling for live use. There's no question about it. Absolutely essential, in my opinion. Then later on, they started adding recording features, and mainly they started giving the ability to record on board, whether you could record straight to an SD card as an example or an external drive. And then they started adding, uh, back in the day, Firewire ports and then Thunderbolt ports and USB-C points, uh, ports and things like that. So overall, like I said before, what you get in a digital mixer typically usually is automated faders, motorized faders, okay? And EQ is typically built in. So your EQ, your compression... Uh, are built into all of your channels typically, and they typically have a multi-effects processor. Uh, depending on the level that you get, you could probably run multiple instances of that and create various sends on the mixer. So you can really do a lot with them, and they can be quite powerful. I think one of the main reasons, I think a lot of people, and it depends on the generation that go towards uh, digital mixers, is they feel daunted by digital audio workstations and the whole process. They just want something that's simple. Your ability just to go in and get something basic, record it, and mix it in a in a in a in a desk that they're quite familiar with. They grew up playing, you know, you using analog desk and they understand that. And so the learning curve is greatly diminished overall on a digital mixer. If that's you, I think, you know, digital mixers can be quite compelling. But let's talk about why digital mixers maybe aren't the best. Uh, investment of your money. In other words, your return on investment. So let's take, for example, you're going to buy a digital mixer um, that is $1,500, right? That has all of your mic pre's built in. Let's say, for example, it has 16 or 24 mic preamps built into it. So you're getting that for $2,400. You have to imagine to be able to pack that many uh, mic preamps as well as all of the faders, the case that it comes in, all of the electronics inside of it that compromises had to be made somewhere. In other words, what is the quality of the mic preamps on that digital mixer compared to what you can get on a pretty decent, so let's say a $1,000 or $1,200 recording interface? What are those mic preamps? What's the quality of those difference going to be? And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be quite significant. Um, also, what is the durability of that? That's a question I think you have to ask. Now, I can't say that it's not durable, but I've sure heard plenty of horror stories where digital mixers simply don't hold up. Um, and so when you, when you look at all of that, and they're also recording digital, they're also adding digital to analog conversion and analog to digital conversion within it. So it has its built-in converters. 
Well, you have to imagine that sacrifices have to be made there. Maybe the specs of that analog to digital conversion is nowhere near on par with something in the thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range. So if you're going to spend twenty five hundred dollars on a digital mixer, you can easily buy a control surface as well as a recording interface. Are you going to get as many mic preamps? No, but do you really need that? I mean, if you're recording your band all the time, and let's say, for example, you're at rehearsal and you want to be able to capture practices and things like that, a digital mixer is absolutely fantastic for something like that. It's really easy and you don't have to worry about any computer issues or anything like that. It just works. But it's the it's the compromises that they have to make when they put so much in that unit for that price. You have to imagine a lot of compromises are made. Also, um, you know, when it when it comes to the ability of the quality of the audio coming out of it, is it going to be on par? That's the question you have to ask yourself. We've come a long way with this. So I think the discrepancy between some of these things is nowhere near as vast as it used to be. Uh, you can certainly do good quality work using them. There's a lot of people out there that do it and do it on a daily basis. Understand that if you're in a digital mixer, you're in, a, you're in a minority if you're using that in your home studio. You are in a minority. Most of them are made for live use. So in other words, typically with that digital mixer, it wouldn't be uncommon for a few years later to, it to be completely replaced with a whole new interface with features way beyond that. And every time they do that, that means the support for the digital mixer that you bought. How Where's that support going to be? Meaning keeping drivers updated, firmware updated, things like that. Where is that going to be in six, eight, even 10 years? I mean, if you buy a quality recording interface, it can easily, and I mean easily, last you 10 years. No problem whatsoever. I've had recording interfaces last me much longer than that. So when you invest in a recording interface, what are you going to get? You know, you're not going to get as many preamps, but your microphone preamps are going to be a higher quality comparatively, right? You're not going to compare a digital mixer to a $400 recording interface, that would not be fair. You'd really be in the thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range for that, uh, you know, excluding the faders, right? And so ultimately, you're going to get better microphone um, microphone preamps for sure. You're not going to get as many, but they're going to be better. So you have to ask yourself, how many do you truly need at one time? Ultimately, the analog to digital conversion and the digital to analog conversion is going to be far superior in that recording interface when you get into that price range. Um, the stability is going to be rock solid. It's likely going to be an interface that you find is supported for a very, very, very long time. Uh, as an example, RME just came out with a brand new interface that is kind of the daughter to the UFX3 um, that has tremendous potential. That thing will be supported for the next 15, 20 years probably as an example. Not every vendor supports their products that long. But your bigger players, when you get into that price range, you're typically dealing with a more serious contender. And so you're, it's going to be something, an investment that's going to last you for a very, very long time. There's many kind of potential downsides to go in the digital mixer, but it's also understandable if you just need something that's easy, that you don't have to put any thought into, that you can just get over that initial little learning curve, which is not that great. Plenty of YouTube videos out there for just about every digital mixer out there and get your head around that real quick, you can get up and going very quickly, and you it really provides almost a worry-free worry -free type of environment. If this guy can figure it all out, so can you. So for me, absolutely, for all the reasons I talked about, a recording interface is a much, much better way to go. You're going to get a better return on your interface. You're going to get, you're likely to get much better quality conversion and your mic preamps built in are great. So I hope you've enjoyed this topic today. Uh, do me a favor, leave me some comments down below. Tell me what you think. Um, but until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye.